Hi everybody, this is Patrick from www.electroniclessons.com and www.engineeringshock.com. Uh, this is my latest project. Uh, it's actually almost a repeat of an old project. This is my uh, breathalyzer uh, Mark II, little brother to uh, breathalyzer Mark I. As you can see, breathalyzer Mark I is much more complicated. Uh, and uh, the main difference is it offers six mess vocal six audio messages rather than uh, a single one. But this one you'll find is a bit easier, uh, more efficient, more power efficient, and uh, just as much fun. Uh, this took me probably a three or four days to design and put the hardware together. And I'm talking probably about 20 hours total to design and put it together, program the. Uh, Pick uh, 18F1220. This one took me uh, two evenings. So let me introduce you to my breathalyzer Mark II. So there are essentially four components here in the block diagram the brain, the Pick 18F1220 microcontroller, the power supply, uh, 9 volts uh, going to a uh, LM7805 50 regulator, uh, single uh, audio recording device, 12 seconds, the ISD1218 uh, chip, um, which obviously works with the speaker. You can record one message and play it back. And finally, the MQ3 alcohol sensor. We sell a lot of this stuff on uh, on our eBay store, which can be found through www.electroniclessons.com. Anyway, so how this works is you power it on. You press the sample button. And what it does is it blinks all of these LEDs uh, until the output of the MQ3 becomes stable. Now it might be stable as soon as you power it on, but say you, uh, you, you're you at a party and a whole bunch of people want to blow into the sensor and get a reading. Uh, once someone's taken a reading, it might the output might still be uh, off kilter a little bit. So what it does is it waits. If you press the sample button again, it keeps blinking until it's calibrated to a, a right voltage level. So once you've taken the, um, once, once it gets to a certain voltage level, after you've pressed the button, it'll say, blow, or whatever you program it to. You can reprogram the chip to say whatever you want at any point in time. The brain chip, the PIC 18F1220, will tell the audio chip to say, blow, or blow into the sensor, or whatever your heart desires. Anyway, then the LED sequence will, will change significantly. It'll start to shift all the way up about 12 times, at which point you blow into the sensor, and after that time has elapsed, you keep blowing at the sensor, it will take its reading and it will give you six different levels. It will light up whichever LED it determines you are, based on some math. Uh, very, if, you, if you have no alcohol or very, very little alcohol, it will say no alcohol, one or two drinks, buzzed, tipsy, drunk, or wasted. So, I've got a little bit of vodka right here, some Canadian, let's have some fun. Okay, so before I start, uh, since the sensor will likely be in an okay state as soon as I power it on, uh, the startup calibration sequence might only go once or twice. It might not even go at all. Uh, but if, what, So what I'm going to do is after I've done one full test of it, I'm going to uh, sample again right away so you see that it calibrates before the next sample. So anyway, I'm going to get my vodka ready and just swish it around my mouth, but first I'm going to plug in my 9-volt battery. now. The MQ3, there's a heater in it. It's a 150 milliamp heater. So you want to put an off on off switch on this thing because it draws a lot of current. You want to get an Energizer or a Duracell. This is a Panasonic and therefore not very good. But it's not, it's a 9 volt, so it should be just fine for our application. So I'll plug it in. I'll press the sample button. Come on, the sensor. Blow on the sensor. So I'm drunk according to this thing because I just took pure vodka and uh, I'll get to that in a second. I'll press the sample button again. See now it's, it's, it's calibrating. But anyway, I'm not going to take another swig this time and what I'm going to do is when it calibrates I'll blow into the sensor again. Because that's actually not my body, my, my alcohol level, it's how much alcohol is in my mouth. For this to be accurate you have to... You have to have it in your system for quite a bit of time. 
See? See? It says buzz now. So if I had a couple beers and waited 10 minutes, that would be an accurate reading. If I had 10 shots of whiskey, waited 10 minutes, that would give me an accurate representation because obviously this is in my, you know, this is, this alcohol is coming directly off my breath because I have it swirling around in my mouth. So anyway, if I want to reprogram what the actual, what it says, it's time to read how much alcohol I have in my breath. I'll sample it again. It's time to read how much alcohol I have in my breath. See? This is how it shows you that you literally have to have this on your breath constantly. And that's what happens when you drink a, a copious amounts of alcohol or several beers. It stays with your system. Uh, and this is exactly why you can't, uh, you can't outrun the uh, cops when it comes to their breathalyzers. Uh, anyway, I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. It's uh, a little bit different than his bigger brother, but it's simpler, it's easy, and you can do it. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, if you, we sell our little audio, the little audio kit here, the recording kit on uh, our eBay store at www.electroniclessons.com. We also sell the MQ3. Uh, let me just show you the back, the, the soldering I did here. Not my best soldering job, but I'm quite happy with it, considering I only had to use four wires. The rest is just my own little, uh, my own solder track setup. Quite happy with it. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys.